from KSAT 12. The news at 530 starts right now. It's here. It's what here. We've all been waiting for that cold front finally moving through and blowing out all that heat and humidity. It couldn't have come at a better time because we are ready for it, Mia. You're timing it all out. We certainly are. Yep, it is pretty much pushed through San Antonio. If you step outside right now, you will definitely notice that temperatures are dropping pretty quickly. Let's see if we can take this full and really show you what we're looking at on the thermometer already in the 50s as you get into northern Bear County and up into the hill country still holding in the 60s for a good portion of San Antonio 70 degrees right now on its Stinson. It's going to continue working its way farther southbound throughout the remainder of the evening. If you are stepping out this evening, bundle up because temperatures are still just going to fall from here. 40s expected by 10 p.m. and by wake up time tomorrow, low 40s feeling like the 30s expected as winds start to pick up as well. We're also going to monitor some rain chances scattered to even widespread overnight. Again, 40 mile per hour wind gusts, temperatures in the 40s by wake up time tomorrow. Monday is going to be a damp cold and blustery day. Halloween though clearing and calming by trick or treat time still going to be chilly. We'll time it out and get you all those details coming up a little bit later on guys. All right, we'll see you then Mia. Meanwhile, a Halloween weekend house party broken up by gun violence. San Antonio police say two people were killed and three others hurt in a shooting. Our Daniela Ibarra is live from the west side. Daniela, what are neighbors there telling you? Courtney and Tim neighbors say that the sound of gunshots is something that's becoming the norm for them. We're on the far end of Roseland Avenue and just down the street is where San Antonio police say that gunfire erupted. Police say the shooting happened before 10 last night on the 300 block of Roseland Avenue during a house party. Police say someone at the party and a neighbor started arguing. Police say that neighbor left and came back with family, one of whom is a 20 year old man who eventually started shooting as the argument continued. Police say a man at the party fired back that man and his wife died and three others, including the couple's 13 year old daughter, were shot. Carol Hernandez says she heard the gunfire and saw police respond. It's worrisome, but you know, the neighborhoods we're all pretty good about keeping an eye out for each other and you know, we do the best we can. Now, police have not identified the victims or the suspects, but tonight you'll hear from neighbors who tell us what they think needs to change in order to keep their neighborhood safe. We're live on the west side, Daniela Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio police are looking for three suspects involved in a drive-by shooting. This happened this afternoon on Mary Diane Drive, close to 410 and Rigsby Avenue. Police say a man in his 30s in his driveway when three gunmen in a gray car pulled up and opened fire, shooting that victim in the torso. We're told he suffered serious injuries and was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Police say he was conscious while he was being transported. An 18 year old girl was shot during a party last night. Just before 1.30 in the morning, police responded to the party on Mountain Valley Street, close to 410 and Medina Base Road. Multiple shots were fired in front of the home and the teen was caught in the gunfire, taking a bullet. She is expected to recover from that injury. Meanwhile, police are still looking for the suspects involved. This is the second shooting this weekend to happen at a party in San Antonio. An alleged car burglar shot himself while trying to run away from police after getting caught in the act. Police say the 18 year old suspect was trying to break into a car on New Rock Drive near Colony in I-10. That was around 2 o'clock this morning. Officers encountered the suspect who took off running and then shot himself in the leg as he was running away. One of his accomplices arrested and the wounded burglar was taken to the hospital to recover. Charges are pending. The eastbound lanes of I-10 were shut down this morning after a person died in a car crash. It happened at 815 near Camp Bullis Road. The Bear County Medical Examiner has not identified that person yet. But those lanes on I-10 have been reopened. And now for some news coming out of the DFW area, a deadly sh a deadly overnight flood has killed two people in Kaufman County after their cars were swept off the road. Alexis Wainwright reports on the disaster that's left people without homes while heavy rain continues to move across the region. Two people are dead after floodwaters took over the roadways in Kaufman County. People actually drove into deep water and got washed off the road. Two different drivers were swept off FM 1390 near Warsaw. And around 3 a.m. is when emergency crews started getting calls about water coming into several people's homes. 
our local fire departments began evacuating people and rescuing people uh, from various parts of the county. The water here is now ankle deep, and this is one of the hardest hit areas here in Kaufman County. You can see just how far back that water goes. We spoke with people who live right here on Love Street who say there was so much more water Friday night. It was all the way up to, if you see the air conditioner, see the water line, it was up that high. Walter Rivers and his wife are just two of the 26 people rescued and evacuated Saturday morning. It was ankle deep when I woke up and then the, uh, the fire rescue team beat on the door and woke me up. When I opened the door, then the water poured in. It came in really fast and uh, at that point we were knee deep in water. Rivers and his other neighbors here on Love Street were spotted wading through floodwaters to get back home. They don't have much left but are starting the cleanup process. My wife's safety. Other than that, it, it don't matter because stuff can be replaced as long as we're alive and well. And after seeing 10 inches of rain in about eight hours, everyone's concerned about the future forecast. Uh, weather service said probably another two to four inches could be coming tomorrow. With what we've already had, that could be very hazardous. Uh, so we're trying to watch out for that. That Alexis Rainwright reporting up there from Dallas. Meanwhile, around the world, the Israeli military is in what the prime minister called a new phase of its war with Hamas. Israel's military said it exchanged gunfire with Hamas and struck targets in northern Gaza. The death toll has risen to nearly 8,000, according to the Hamas-controlled Palestinian Ministry of Health. Families of the more than 200 hostages in Gaza are growing increasingly fearful for their missing loved ones as Israel steps up its operations in the enclave. Israel's defense minister says rescuing the hostages is the military's top priority and that the fighting will expedite their return. As we hit Hamas Hara, there is a better chance that the enemy agrees to solutions to the return of our dear, loved and beloved ones. Among those more than 200 hostages are some Americans. The Biden administration continuing to work on getting them released. Still to come on the news at 5.30, Muertos Fest is still happening over at Hemisphere. If you can't make it out there tonight, we'll tell you how you can catch the festivities coming up this week. And a shortage of an RSV vaccine as San Antonio doctors concerned for the winter season. What people with compromised immune systems can do for the break. With winter approaching, it's common for cases of respiratory viruses to increase. But this year, doctors locally are a little worried because of a vaccine shortage that can help those with weak immune systems. That vaccine is called Nirsevimab, and it's used to treat RSV and seasonal disease that can become more severe than a cold if it's not taken care of. But since the new vaccine is Production, since the vaccine is new, production has not been able to meet demand. So the CDC warns to take care of adults over the age of 60 and infants as the vaccine slowly rolls out. Downtown is set up to honor loved ones who have passed away. Yeah, Muertos Fest started at noon and will be continuing tonight through 9 o'clock at Hemisphere. It's San Antonio's largest Dia de los Muertos festival and was previously named one of the seven best fall festivals in the U.S. by National Geographic. If you weren't able to make it out there yesterday, the altars will still be up today. Parking is limited, though, so people are encouraged to use ride share, bike, or even walk if possible. And if you're not able to make it out there the rest of the evening or at all, you can still see all the beauty during our special broadcast of the festivities. That'll be this Wednesday from 8 to 10 right here on KSAT 12 or online at KSAT.com or any way you stream us. When we come back, we'll have a look at how long this cold weather is going to be hanging around and... We're just going to enjoy it as we go to break. It's good stuff. So if you look on social media, social media, mm -hmm. Mia and I were just geeking out outside over the fact that the cold front is finally here. It is just amazing because you open the door now in San Antonio and the second you walk out, you just feel 
cooler, more comfortable. I mean, it's going to get cold. I'm yes. Turn you're... off my AC while you do the weather. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There's oh, your look reminder. Look at you fancy on your phone. I forgot to do that before I came. Turn it off as AC on his on phone. On the phone. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so you're not going to need the AC over the next several days because that colder air is moving into south central Texas. Here's another look at temperatures because this is the big story. 62 over at the airport. It's 58 in Holotus. Even colder the farther north that you go. 49 right now in Kerrville. As we zoom this out, you can see exactly where that front is positioned just off to the south. Petula Carrizo Springs. It hasn't reached you just yet. Temperatures currently in the 80s and even low 90s down I-35 closer to Laredo. But behind it, Fredericksburg Junction in the 40s as well. Already upper 30s in Ozona. So if you're stepping out this evening, definitely plan on bundling up because temperatures are just going to fall from here as we really see these north winds take over and this colder air continues to surge into south central Texas. Here's 7 p.m. We're in the 50s here in the Alamo City by 10 11 p.m. Now we're in the 40s. Watch what happens as we continue to advance this on in time through the overnight and by wake up time tomorrow morning 7 a.m. Stepping out for the morning commute and drive to school cold weather in store low 40s but when you factor in gusty north winds upwards of 40 to even 45 miles per hour it is going to feel like the 30s tomorrow and because of overcast gloomy skies it feels like temperatures are likely going to stay in the 30s throughout the majority of the day actual air temperatures not able to climb out of the 40s it is going to be damp tomorrow as well scattered showers are expected expected 60% chance by 7 a.m. 40% potential as we head into the lunchtime hour and then that becomes a little bit more isolated by late afternoon and into the evening. I do want to talk about the winds though. We are already starting to see wind gusts upwards of 25 to even 30 miles per hour in and around the San Antonio area tonight and especially by tomorrow morning. Those winds are expected to gust upwards of 40 to even 45 miles per hour. So definitely want to make sure any outdoor Halloween decorations are secured as well as any loose yard items will still be a little breezy into the first half of the day on Tuesday upwards of about 20 to 25 miles per hour. But then those winds start to subside by Tuesday evening, which is great for trick or treating. I do want to talk about the rain chances right now. We've got a few light showers northern Bear County near Fair Oaks Ranch, Silver Hills that stretches up closer to Canyon Lake. A few more notable showers, though, closing in on the Uvalde area. That's moving in from the west, and that continues down the Highway 83 corridor closer to La Prior, Crystal City, as well as Carrizo Springs. This is your future cast depicting what the radar could look like here as we head into this evening. Pretty scattered, mainly west of I-35, just isolated here in San Antonio. But by 9, 10 o'clock, that starts to become more scattered in nature. A 70% potential by midnight and into the pre-dawn hours of our Monday. That can continues first thing tomorrow morning and then more isolated into the later portions of the afternoon. Now Tuesday, a stray shower possible in the morning, but by trick or treat time, that's going to be clearing out. So that's fantastic news. Wind's going to be dying down as well, but it's still going to be chilly. So definitely choose the warmer costume option for the kiddos this year. We may need to monitor maybe for a very brief light freeze across the hill country on Wednesday morning, but other than that, we're staying above that here in San Antonio and we'll start to warm things up into next weekend, guys. Perfect Good for stuff. trick or treating. Mm -hmm. Yes. This year for Halloween, the Cowboys decided to go as the competent version of themselves. <laughs> That's really well put, honestly. A huge win today for the Cowboys, not only seeing their offense do things, defense was doing things too. We're going to have a full breakdown of this game. Our Mary Rominger was there. Plus, how about these Texans trying to get things going? We're going to have that game with some huge top three draft picks all playing in one game today. You're not going to want to miss it, so stay with us. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm.
You know, sometimes rest can be the best thing that we give ourselves. And the Dallas Cowboys looked really well rested coming off their bye week and hosting the Los Angeles Rams. Dak Prescott got some extra sleep to make this pass to Jake Ferguson for the 18 yard touchdown. What a grab by Ferguson who does his little dancey dance and the Rams trying to respond. But Matthew Stafford gets picked off by Deron Bland, who just returns it for a 30 yard pick six. Then in the second quarter, after a safety, a few field goals, and a CD Lamb touchdown, Dak looking for him again, and he's wide open in the end zone as the Cowboys are going to win it 43 to 20. Our Mary Rominger was there and has more from Jerry's World on the Cowboys' dominant win. This is the performance that the Dallas Cowboys and their fans have been waiting for. The Cowboys put all types of pressure on the Los Angeles Rams as Dak Prescott threw three touchdown passes in the first half for the first time in his career. Dak looked very poised in the pocket, finishing with 304 passing yards, 158 of which went to CeeDee Lamb on a career high 12 catches with the addition of two touchdowns. Very satisfying. Uh, it proves in my ability, proves that I trust in myself, and it also proves that my team trusts in me. So I uh, appreciate that for them, love that for me, and um, we got to keep building. A lot of trust in that guy. He runs, he knows what I'm thinking, we're always communicating, um, and I think that's why when it's not going our way, it's, it's frustrating, you know what I mean, because we put so much into it, but uh, we're just, he, he's right now, we're reaping the rewards of, of everything that we've put into this, and it's only going to continue to grow, because all that does is give everybody, himself, the whole team, play caller, everybody more confidence, and, and uh, getting him in positions, and uh, allowing us to, to go to work. Not much, if at all, went wrong for the Cowboys this afternoon, but Nick, you know just as well as I do, the real test comes next week at Philadelphia. From AT&T Stadium, Mary Rominger, KSAT 12 Sports. Thank you, Mary. We'll have even more on the Cowboys win tonight on instant replay. As for the Texans, they look to take on the Carolina Panthers. And first overall pick Bryce Young, who on third and goal finds Tommy Tremble for the touchdown. Now third quarter, second overall pick CJ Stroud gets the QB sneak to retake the lead. But clock management was key in this one as the Panthers' Eddie Pinero drills the walk-off field goal as time expires as the Panthers get their first win of the season, 15 to 13 in the final. Texans head coach D'Amico Ryans wants more consistency. Yeah, we got to learn how to handle success, right? Young team growing as we continue to grow, continue to learn, you got to learn how to handle success, right? How do you work after a win, right? You can't get too up and too down in this league. We have to remain consistent. We have to continue to put in the same work, right? That same desperation you have when you've lost a game. You have to have that every single week. Now the Texans next week will be back at home hosting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers over in Nashville. The Atlanta Falcons came to town trying to beat the Titans dressed in their Houston Oilers old uniforms. Another QB from the NFL's past NFL drafts was Will Levis was slinging it to DeAndre Hopkins wide open for the touchdown second quarter. More of the same Levis to Hopkins across the middle for another touchdown as the Titans win it 28 to 23 Jaguars at the Steelers. Trevor Lawrence was 24 of 32 with 292 through the air and one touchdown this afternoon. Jags win it 21 to 10 over the Steelers. Jacksonville has won five in a row and are the number one team in the AFC South. Eagles at the Commanders. Washington up 14 to three until Philly found the end zone. Jalen Hurts ended up with 29 of 38 for 319 yards and four touchdowns, two of them to A.J. Brown. Philly wins it 38 to 31 and will host the Cowboys, as we mentioned, next Sunday, 325 p.m. at Lincoln Financial Field. It's just all about execution. Uh, pitching will always be about execution. Um, you know, he kept the ball out of the, the middle of the zone where we like to hit it. And, you know, we're going to have to do a little bit more just to, to get to those pitches next time. Now Marcus Simeon and the Texas Rangers were shut down by the Arizona Diamondbacks starting pitcher Merrill Kelly last night. He went seven innings with nine strikeouts and only three hits as Arizona won the game two of three or game two of the World Series nine to one. Game three will require a little bit more offense from the Rangers as they look to retake the series lead tomorrow night. First pitch is at 7.03 p.m. And back here in town, the San Antonio Saints volleyball team went all the way to the National Homeschool Volleyball 
Volleyball Championship match this weekend. It came up one match short, losing to Dash, a team out of Dallas. The Saints were undefeated in the national tournament heading into the championship match, but ran into another dominant squad from the Lone Star State, making it back to back seasons that the Saints have made it all the way to the national championship match. And taking home second is nothing to hang your head about. In their Facebook post, the Saints wrote that they are walking away from nationals with full hearts and as this has been an amazing ride with a season they'll definitely not forget. We'll be right back.